this is the famous Cotan formula for the discretization of the Laplacian. What it says is that if I take this Laplacian uh, and compute it on you, essentially you can think of this as I've applied the discrete matrix on the discrete vector, and this is the ith component of that vector. Okay, this is, I could write it as del the Laplace matrix times the u vector, which is the vector of solution at the vertex points. And I compute, look at its ith component. I mean, it, this I, ith component could correspond to some vertex in your mesh. It doesn't matter. But if I look at it, I can write it down as this formula. It says it's uh, some cotangent. Uh, okay, it's there later. Okay, it pops up. But um, if I look at it here, it's going to be the for these two triangles. If I try computing it for this vertex, so this is my vertex, and I'm kind of looking at two of these triangles. I've shown it slightly differently here. Uh, it's going to involve the cotangent of these two opposite angles for this edge. And then I go around this one ring of um, triangles incident on this vertex and collect terms like this. That's the summation. It's the summation over all triangles if you want incident on this vertex. And uh, so this vertex is called as the ith vertex in this formula. And all other vertices are sort of the jth vertices. And it involves uh, just computing the cotangent of angles like this, collecting their sums and going around a uh, wandering of triangle like this. Okay, so this is the cotan formula. Um, for this uh, discrete Laplacian. But the thing is, this cotan formula is not really very new as well, okay? It it comes with from a discretization I'm not again stepping into, but I've put references and put some illustrations here. There is a completely geometric discretization of partial differential equations called as discrete exterior calculus. Okay. In in a in discrete exterior calculus, one has this object, the primal mesh, meshes that you have been playing with. One also has a Voronoi dual region of these meshes. So here, this 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 illustration shows you the various dual elements, which are marked by the star operation of the primal elements. So for this vertex V, this red color patch, again identified here, is the dual region. This is the dual region for this vertex. For this edge, it's this this edge joining these Voronoi points. Voronoi dual region points. So this it's this edges dual is a boundary of the Voronoi region. You can see that here as well. For edge E, star E is its dual. And Voronoi tessellations ha have some specific properties. It turns out for Voronoi regions, these points are the circumcenters of each of these triangles. And this mesh itself would then be called as a Delaunay mesh. But Okay, so you can identify these. You can make a one-to-one -one identification between vertices and dual regions, edges and dual edges, and a region like a triangle and a dual vertex. Okay. There are so there is this geometric second mesh that is brought in in discrete exterior calculus called as a dual mesh, which again is sort of analogous to graph duals that you might have encountered in, in, in a basic CS course or something. In, in a course in, in algorithms, maybe, I don't know, uh, or data structures. So there is a graph dual analogously, you extend it to meshes and you have the Voronoi region, which is the dual of a, of a Delaunay triangulation. And you have both these primal and dual meshes and you do some discretizations. It's, I've shown it very, very slightly here. And if, you, if you're interested, I can point you to more references suggest where to read. This Cotan formula pops up more readily as a geometric formula. If I use the discretization of the Laplacian in discrete exterior calculus, and I'm not going to try and explain each of these terms. Uh, these are these require some higher geometry to be studied. Uh, things called as differential forms and uh, how you um, 
do calculus on differential forms and there are these operators called as exterior derivative something called as the uh, hodge star and there are many other operators but the scalar laplacian or this laplace beltrami that we might sometimes say has this discretization it's 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 a product of three matrices and this hodge star is a diagonal matrix and corresponds to these entries okay and i'm going to go to keenan crane's note on this cotan formula keenan crane in case you haven't you don't know is a is a is an academic at carnegie mellon to repeat myself and he has some really incredible notes uh, crane and i have some we are kind of academic cousins um, we have some relationship uh, in our academic lineage but you should go look up his notes this this whole thing you can think of this whole module on uh, on laplace beltrami and its discretization you could use that as a stepping stone to go read crane's notes which are beautifully illustrated every um, every concept will have a, a, a figure showing it uh, showing or trying to explain it and crane dev has developed it over many years i mean probably over 10 years or something so it's in a really great shape and you can go read it and i've pulled uh, unashamedly and unabashedly from his notes for explaining this this um, cotan formula alone the cotan formula has this as the weight and it's related to the length of the dual edge over the primal edge okay Th this part i wanted to show you there's this dual edge length and the primal edge length so here you can see that this is my primary primal edge on the triangle mesh this is the dual edge part of which is shown uh, there can be other there will be other duals going around from that other illustration on two triangles so there is a length of this dual edge that's written down with this absolute sign and the length of this primal edge written down like this this formula is equal equal to this length of dual over length of primal and this is how you discretize this hodge star operator in discrete exterior calculus so i'll leave you with these uh, notes that i've written here um, keenan has worked in i mean has been involved in the discrete exterior calculus community as well um, which arose as a graphics processing thing but now i mean some people my advisor and i have used it i mean it it sort of came from his thesis my advisor's thesis but we now use it for more pde things uh, whereas when my advisor wrote it he wrote it in a computer science sort of a setting for graphics processing and keenan sort of comes from the same lineage and um, he's aware of it and that's why you can see it very clearly written down in his notes and doesn't make a reference to mass matrix like um, stiffness matrix and finite elements or anything like that the point is that uh, this cotan formula which is identical to the finite element discretization for the lowest order finite element is also related to a different discretization of pds using this idea called discrete exterior calculus where there are these primal dual meshes and so on and so forth okay And I'm going to sort of end uh, soon. Probably there's only that was the last slide for this session. We might stop a little early as well. That's okay, and take questions for long and more discussion. Uh, I can go back. I can show you the very very first slide we started with. Uh, I said that the Laplace Beltrami is the operator on the manifolds, which is written down as divergence of gradient, which is exactly same similar to the Euclidean version of Laplacian. Okay, I'm going to show you that. Uh, so let's go to thumbnails. If I can see my thumbnails, I can't see my thumbnails. Uh, okay, now I go to thumbnails. And I go right back to the first slide. So this is where we started. I said, this is my Laplacian in Rn. And this is my Laplacian on a Riemannian manifold. The Laplacian is the same 
operators on both ca- in both cases it's divergence of gradient divergence of gradient except that divergence and gradient on a manifold have um, come from more uh, somewhat more deep geometry and is related to the to the metric and so on and so forth whereas here these are standard vector calculus operators many of you would have encountered or will encounter in some course work okay uh, this operator is really called the laplace beltrami this is the scalar laplacian or the zero laplacian or the laplacian that we know if it is posed on a riemannian manifold it's called as the laplace beltrami and the cotan formula what it helps is that it doesn't i mean it gives you this really nice geometric uh, way of computing this this laplace's di- discretization so it uses these uh, geometry of triangles alone these are the angles that pop up in the in the cotans and therefore it doesn't matter whether this mesh is living on a flat r2 plane or is a mesh on some surface okay a surface like a stanford bunny for instance or a dragon or what may, whatever you might want okay or, so all of them are kind of the same object which is a sphere so this if i can put down a mesh on a riemannian manifold and there are ideas for doing so called intrinsic delaunay meshes and so on but uh, someone hands you a mesh a triangle mesh on a manifold i can use this cotan formula to write down the laplacian and therefore claim i've discretized the laplace beltrami okay so the cotan formula is therefore pretty vital because it's it encapsulates a lot of things otherwise that one would not be um, would not have the time or bandwidth to learn about you can blindly use the laplace beltrami by using appropriate lengths on a, on a manifold if it's a flat manifold you might still end up using lengths which are like euclidean lengths or you might if this triangle was living on some surface you might flatten the triangle and try and compute its lengths and so on so there are ways people do it packages like libigl do this in any case i can use this as a black box uh, formula and compute using meshes on a on a manifold the discretization of the laplacian okay that is the last slide i had for this this morning session and we have at least 30 minutes uh, so i'm happy to talk more about any specific things that you might have or questions or follow up discussions that you would like to have i have a question here yes go on please so yeah, in this discrete exterior calculus uh, can we also apply i mean Uh, can you also derive similar kind of formulas for other uh, vector calculus operators like uh, the curl or divergence uh yes in fact you can do it for any differential form which is related to these objects in and lives in n dimensional manifolds so we will get the same kind of accuracy which we are getting for uh, for the laplacian uh you will uh, so by laplacian if you mean the lowest order laplacian yes the discrete discrete exterior calculus is also a low order um, approximation the same order as using lagrange linear elements yes and if we want to go to higher orders there would there is some something else we need to do with uh, discrete exterior calculus or we cannot go on no for higher order if you can't do discrete exterior calculus you can do the you can do the uh, the quote and quote uh, obvious way of doing it which is like you refine your mesh or whatever and you do this so called h accuracy right so you can always get more accurate not higher order but by refining the meshes but if you want a truly higher order method you would be um forced to take the finite element route uh and then there is finite element exterior calculus where you have any arbitrary lie high order uh, polynomial approximation for the laplacian if you or the, rather the solution spaces and you can define the laplacians on those and these are any laplacians these are the so called hodge laplacians which uh, give you back scalar laplacians vector laplacians and other laplacians that you can't 
you can only define in R4 or higher dimensions or n-dimensional manifolds. Okay, right. So, uh, so sorry, yeah. So sorry, just to, the keyword is finite element exterior calculus. Sorry about that. Yeah, go on. So uh, I mean, uh, it's, if this topic is still it's still a part of uh, research, or there is some basic books which we can refer and which will basically uh, give us uh, more detail. Because uh, I mean, uh, you touched this topic uh, in last half an hour and. I mean, it takes some time to sink in these kind of concepts. So, uh, yes, uh, I've been studying these for almost since 2009. So, uh, I can yeah. totally relate when I started out. It, it can be, I have tried my best to only give you the very, very basics, but it can yeah. be daunting. Yes, yeah, so there, is there it, it'll be, yeah. Sorry. Is there any basic uh, textbook which we can refer? Yes, there uh, is a textbook. Um, so, the, the people who, quote unquote invented finite element calculus are Doug, Doug Arnold, three mathematicians, Arnold, Falk and Winter. Arnold is in Minnesota, Falk is in Rutgers or was in Rutgers, and he's retired. And Winter is in uh, Norway, I think. Thing is these people worked on it for them by themselves for almost 25 years, uh, since 1983 or 84. And the paper was published in 2010. It's called finite element exterior calculus. Uh, the paper itself is probably like 100, 120 or 150 pages long or is, or something like that. And Doug has since written a book also called as Finite Element Exterior Calculus, which uh, you can obtain wherever you obtain your books from. Uh, even at the risk of saying it, I, I obtain my books from Libgen. Uh, I believe in free knowledge. So yeah, you can obtain a copy of it from Libgen and you can try reading it. Um, the book is little more explanatory than the paper. Okay. It's so it's Doug Arnold, A R N O L D, the same Arnold name as the more famous Arnold. There was a more famous mathematician named Arnold, but this is Douglas Arnold, and his book is also called Finite Element Exterior Calculus. So, are you uh, also aware about? these kind of methods being applied in the area of electromagnetics, uh, solving the numerical problems in electromagnetics. Yes, uh, I, I don't know. I'm sorry, who, I don't know who's speaking. But yes, I'm personally myself interested in computational electromagnetics problems, coupled computational uh, electromagnetics problems. And uh, finite element exterior calculus can be readily applied. In fact, it comes, it has its roots in computational electromagnetics. People like works of Nedelec um, at, and then like Bosovit and others uh, who did some work on all this like in 80s and 90s. So it can be totally applied to computational electromagnetics problems. So, uh, so uh, yeah. sorry Rajendra, sorry for yes. uh, interviewing. Uh, this is Rajendra, he's my former colleague. Uh, oh. He's currently with MNIT. Uh, he nice. was in the area of computational electromagnetics. Just to give you a little background. Yeah, so basically, I uh, I mean, um, I'm uh, more into integral equation based methods, so uh, the Green's functions and all. So uh, that's why I was wondering uh, if, if this method, uh, I mean, what are the advantages compared to the most common methods used in? in uh, Okay, so integral equation methods, I am not too familiar with, so I can't quite make a direct comparison with integral equations, but I can give you more broadly uh, some. So let's say if, if we compare the finite element method, uh, yeah. Yeah, if you want to compare it with finite, that's also fine. Yeah, so um, so in in electromagnetics, there are these vector elements called as edge elements. Uh, I don't know if you're if you're yes, familiar yes. with them. So yes. these these finite element spaces and finite element exterior calculus are kind of are generally are at the lowest order. It coincides with the edge element spaces. It's the same as edge elements, or what sometimes is called as Nedelec element of second kind, and there's a first kind. Uh, so these are again the the roots are in computational electromagnetics, and um, 
the advantage that it has there are these things you have to consider called magnetic cuts in in electromagnetics problems if your domain has holes in them like if you have a conductor okay. passing through your region and people retort to so called asi phi formulations there are some formulations involving the magnetic vector potential magnetic scalar potential electric scalar potential there's something called as a magnetic scalar potential introduced people have been solving these problems in the community in electromagnetics as far as i know using some such methods and you have to kind of sort of take the topology of the domain on which you are defining your problem and these cuts kind of took care of the topology being non trivial the point with finite element exterior calculus is that it's sort of uh, the stability someone at the start was asking me about stability of some discrete problem stability results kind of come from ideas and cohomology in algebraic topology and the the spaces correctly capture the 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 discrete cohomology of the space on which these problems are defined okay if all of that sounded like uh, <laughs> fluffing the the simpler answer is that people knew about these uh, spurious modes and spurious solutions in electromagnetics things yes. like that are kind of um, completely taken care of by finite element exterior calculus formulation there are no spurious modes because the the root cause of spurious modes is not present in these problems in in discretization using uh, finite element exterior calculus okay all right and in terms of performance wise we get the same kind of performance right uh, mm, for uh, like okay code or something like that so performance is a is 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 these days a tricky question because like um, because flops are more or less for free computational cost is not the problem uh these and nobody i mean perhaps you want you wouldn't use beyond like second or third order method in any case i would suspect I, unless i do yeah, no problems right. and for those those are as reasonable as i mean any any second order third order method in finite elements that you would know of because there are some using bernstein bases you can express these function spaces quite efficiently to compute these mass matrices stiffness matrices uh but i can't again comment versus say integral equations or boundary okay. element methods that no, no, i'm not talking about uh, i'm not uh, i don't want to compare with the integral equation i was just uh, comparing it with the finite element method of the first order if we compare in terms of performance no it it will cost more because uh, the you you get the you get the p convergence you get higher order convergence in in the okay. polynomial in the hp so terminology of convergence you get higher order convergence and therefore you will have to do more computations uh, that trade off is always there you the, the system matrices relative to the lowest order will be larger how much larger will depend on whether it's a 2d problem 3d problem uh, and things like that like uh, because the degrees of freedom sort of depend on the mesh and so on so in general it's going to be a larger system but you wouldn't need a very highly refined mesh anyways to start with okay all right thanks okay if there are any more so just one question from my end yes go on okay yes. so so uh, in this finite element method of discretizing this laplace bell run is this mass matrix that comes yes. up right uh, any particular reason why it doesn't show up in dc discrete exterior calculus uh, no it shows up in or... discrete exterior calculus as well uh, oh okay maybe i missed yeah the okay. mass matrix but it's in discrete exterior calculus it's a diagonal matrix okay Okay. In finite elements, it's only like right. a sparse matrix. Banded system. Right. Yes, it'll be a banded system. Yes. Right. Okay. And the diagonal entries here would be what the area, this Voronoi region area. Yes, for some of them it'll be like if it is the 
so called diagonal zero hodge star or diagonal zero mass matrix or sorry zero mass matrix it will be this voronoi region area okay if it's the one mass matrix it's this like in the in this node it's going to be the dual edge length divided by primal edge length and then for a triangle there is also a two mass matrix which is just the area of this triangle okay which corresponds to sort of the dual is just the point yeah uh, so it's very geometric the the entries are geometrically computed rather than okay. any integration or analysis okay yeah thank you okay uh, i can add a version i can add this version of the slides to the shared google drive but i'm happy to update it in in a day or two with some more references embedded in the presentation itself right i think uh, you do plan to add references then maybe that would be uh, preferable sure but so let me after this is this session is done i'll just add the current version to the google sure, drive sure. folder and then i'll work i'll add the references hope tonight or by tomorrow that's okay that could be fine okay another uh, question uh, which just popped up uh, yes, okay please. in uh, cotan matrices uh, as in uh, this cotan uh, cotan matrix method that you have shown right now is it like uh, say meaning that triangle that you have made outside the yeah. that uh, to extend that uh, you can say delaunay uh, areas as in that delaunay uh, structure that is there yeah. so how exactly is that star t and star e and star v how uh, are those related and what is the geometric aspect to it i yeah so like... i can zoom in hopefully you can see the zoomed in version of this yeah imagine this triangle mesh is from a is from a triangle mesh like this okay it's a small region if you want i can zoom in and this region looks sort of like that one ring there's a one ring of triangles okay, okay. plus there's a little more but so imagine this this what i've shown is from a triangle mesh this is from some triangle mesh that's why these black color things that you see everywhere is a triangle mesh okay yes and everything that has been shown in red is a is from a dual mesh okay and the red dots are some dual elementary duals and so on but let's skip for now those red dotted lines but every solid red line is a part of a dual mesh okay, okay. this idea is like graph duals what it says is if i take a vertex i can define its dual region so to be this uh, To, to be this Voronoi region around this point, okay. okay. And then for an edge, so I have I've put the Voronoi region. I've highlighted and shaded this one Voronoi region, but there are these other ones extending out as well. Okay. For an edge, there will always be like this one edge of the Voronoi dual intersecting this edge by construction, okay. if you want. So that one edge of this Voronoi region. is the dual edge for this edge which is now called as the primal edge because there is a dual you call this primal which is just the edge of a triangle mesh okay so e bold black is a primal edge and the star e bold red is its dual edge likewise okay. bold v is a is a primal vertex and the shaded red is the dual volume or dual region to this vertex and finally i have a primal region which is shown in light black here and it has a dual which is a vertex so things if you want if you think of it like so there's vertices edges triangles and it goes the opposite way in the dual it's dual regions dual edges and dual vertices a, a region has a dual vertex okay and then uh, in discrete exterior calculus like for instance the mass matrices are computed by looking at these so called support volumes and computing some geometric quantities pertaining to them so if i want the vertex ma mass matrix 
it will involve this dual region area for the mass matrix corresponding to this edge, which is what is the cotan formula weights. It will correspond to this dual length over the primal length. And then there is one more mass matrix, which will be just the area of the triangle, which will contain elements, which are areas of the triangle. And some of these are used in, in, in discretizing the Laplacian here. And for this zero Laplacian or the scalar Laplacian, so in, in, this, in exterior calculus, one says zero Laplacian, one Laplacian and so on. The scalar Laplacian or the Laplace Beltram is the zero Laplacian and its discretization pops up the Cotan formula, if you want, where this formula was not written down referencing discrete exterior calculus in its original form in the in that pink column Poltier work from 80s or 90s. But it comes out evidently if you looked at it from a discrete exterior calculus discretization of these Laplacians, if you want. Okay. And uh, uh, this sort of you are saying it scales up when we apply it to the whole Yes, uh, yes. This is just 2D. a part of it. Yes, yes. It will scale up to 2D or 3D meshes as well. Yeah, or n-dimensional meshes as well, but nobody, I mean, you you don't use n-dimensional meshes for non-mathematical purposes, but yeah. So yeah, it scales up. Every This is sh shown as, as a fragment from the whole for illustration purpose. Okay. And is there a 1D analog to this? In 1D, everything sort of uh, degenerates into the same thing. So in 1D also, I can do dual regions. Uh, if I go back uh, from to some disk where I had my 1D domain. Uh, okay, so if I looked at this, in 1D, there can be like, I take the midpoint and I would say that that's the Voronoi region of this vertex from starting from this vertex to the midpoint of this edge. And then starting from this midpoint to the next midpoint will be the Voronoi region of this vertex and so on and so forth. Uh, it's not that interesting in the sense it can still be used for the discretization of the Laplacian, but it's slightly degenerate. Everything will come down to looking like the finite difference method or the finite element method. Okay. That just... Yeah, sorry. No, I just was thinking that was interesting. Uh, that it actually like it scales down also was the interesting lesson. Even though it might be like moving to a degenerate idea. Uh, oh, oh, by scales... degenerate, I mean, I, I don't mean that the method is degenerate. All the discretizations will look the same. So you can't tell if it's discrete exterior calculus or finite element method or finite difference. All of the matrices will look the same, are the same, are identical. That's what I mean by degenerate. Okay. Okay. Whereas you go to 2D, you, you'll start seeing differences in even these matrices. Not the Laplacian though, not the Laplacian, but other uh, like the vector Laplacian will look different whether I use finite elements or discrete exterior calculus. And there's nothing like a Cotan formula for the vector Laplacian. Okay. 